In this video, we're going to look at how we can find the rate of reaction from a graph. And we can see from this graph that the rate of reaction is changing because the gradient is changing. So it starts off steep, which means there would be a high rate of reaction, and it finishes um, with a very low rate of reaction as the gradient gets smaller. So the tricky thing with this is that the rate of reaction is different as we progress through all those different times. So we've got to find what's called the instantaneous rate of reaction. To do this, we've got to find the gradient of the graph. And you may have used this technique of drawing a tangent to find the gradient of a curved graph when you do speed from a distant time graph, for example, in physics. So if we wanted to find the rate of reaction at a time of five seconds, then we'd need to estimate what the gradient of the graph is at this point of five seconds. We don't have to choose a point where there's already a point on the graph. We could do it for any point that we like on the line. But I'm going to stick with five seconds, and I need to place my ruler alongside so it touches the line just at that point. It's no good if the ruler crosses the line or if the ruler crosses the line twice. I've got to adjust the ruler so that it touches the line just at that point of five seconds because I want the rate of reaction at five seconds. So that looks roughly okay. So I'll draw in my line. And once I've drawn in my line, then it's the same way that you would find a gradient of a straight line graph from there on in. It's useful to draw a triangle, and if I've got nice points, for example here and here on the line, which are going to be easy to read, I can draw my triangle between those points. But I could in reality choose any points that I like to draw my triangle, but you need to make sure that the triangle is big or you won't get a very accurate gradient. So let's draw in my triangle, and once I've drawn in my triangle, I need to first of all look at how much the vertical changes by and label that up. So the volume of gas produced went from 5 up to 25. So the change in that volume of gas would be 25 minus 5, which would give me 20. For the time, it went from 0 up to 10. So the change in that would be 10 minus 0, which would give me 10, or 10 seconds even. So now I've got my change in the vertical and change in the horizontal. The next thing to do is to calculate my gradient. So the gradient I calculate by doing the change in the vertical, which is my 20, divided by the change in the horizontal, which is 10. And then I can work that out on a calculator. I don't need a calculator for this one because it's fairly obviously 2. But what I do need to do still is do the units. And that will be whatever is on the vertical, centimetres cubed, divided by, so I put a diagonal slash, divided by the time which was in seconds. So that would give me centimetres cubed per second. So that gives me the instantaneous gradient of the line or the instantaneous rate of reaction at five seconds. If I wanted to know, for example, the instantaneous rate at eight seconds, which would be this point, I'd have to draw in another tangent. And that might look something like this, touching the line just at that point there. And I could draw in another tangent and do the same process. Common mistake is when people want to work out the rate of reaction, they just read off the point, which for this one would be 15 and 5 seconds, and just do 15 divided by 5, which would give 3 in this case, where we've seen that the answer is 2. What you're doing there is working out the average rate of reaction, and the average rate of reaction is just the total produced over the total time. So we would be working out the average rate of reaction over the first five seconds. And since we can see that this is, has a higher rate of reaction at the start because it's a steeper gradient 
and then a more gradual rate of reaction later, it's not surprising that when we work that out that we get a smaller value. The key thing to remember is if you want the instantaneous rate of reaction, you've got to draw in a tangent at the appropriate point that you want the instantaneous reaction, reaction rate of. And if you want the average rate of reaction, you would have to work that out by doing the total produced over the total time.